Well, hello everybody! I had a lot of fun making the previous video about the Lorebeards, but in the wake of that, I felt that something came up that bears discussing. And no, it's not the fact that people publish public information and then get angry when that information that they themselves shared propagates via screenshots of their very sharing of that information and that that shared information stays in that place for anyone at any time to see. Although it's something they're going to have to square with at some point if they continue to use Facebook, which is not the end-all be-all of social media, by the way. Just look at MySpace or LiveJournal to discover Facebook's eventual fate. So the topic of the day isn't any of that. It is none other than the responses I got from some folks and how this plays into the greater topic of the dangers of attaching your identity, your self-worth, and your ego to the things you like. Because when you do this, you will perceive criticism of those things as a personal attack against you. You are emotionally hurt by the things that a regular person would just shrug at. Like so? Anytime anyone criticizes a game, you will have fans of that game attack that person. Here's an example of something that can incite rage into a specific fan base. I thought Breath of the Wild was a breath of fresh air for abandoning the played out and done before tropes of other Zelda games that came before it. However, looking at it as an open world action game, and I played tons of them, it's subpar. With horribly designed weapon mechanics and a weapon fragility system, which stands in sharp contrast to actual weapon degradation systems, which are good because this is shit. For that reason, I'd give Breath of the Wild a 7 out of 10. It's better than your average Zelda game, average being 5 out of 10. Because I live in a world where the average baseline is 5. But you can already see modders on the emulated Wii U version making it better than ever. If you fix the weapon system, 8 out of 10. If you fix the pacing and progression, 9 out of 10. If you fix the inventory, 10 out of 10 best Zelda game ever. But you see what I'm getting at. Fans of Breath of the Wild will attack me for saying these things. In this way, fandoms are terrible. But you can't blame it on the game, and you can't blame it on the people. Doesn't matter if it's Steven Universe or Undertale. The game isn't to blame, and the people aren't to blame. Because they're just acting out their emotions. What they see as logical, plain, and evident fact is actually being twisted in their head by a concept known as human tribalism. Now when people think about a tribe, they usually think about it as having a chief. They think about it as very primal and kind of proto-culture. But in reality, tribalism is at the core of our culture. A tribe is actually a sense of belonging or community around a mutual connection. It's possible to have multiple chiefs or no chiefs, or instead have an icon that's used to represent the position of chief. If you thoroughly watched my Lorebeards discussion, I likened the Elder Scrolls lore to Christianity, because there are many, many branches of it. Not everyone believes in the authority of the Pope or Michael Kirkbride. Some follow other leaders or prophets, but have the shared icon of Jesus Christ or Bethesda. To each other, however, they are rivals, and they gather with like-minded individuals, and they don't take kindly when people try to convert their faithful to a rival group. It's like politics. If you're a Democrat or a Republican, the other side is literally Hitler, because they have to be. That's how the tribe works. What's important to you isn't important to them. And because it isn't important to them, they are objectively bad people to you. They are trying to corrupt your message. They're trying to get people to vote the wrong way. They will confuse people with their incorrect statements and make them your enemy. You have to spread the truth. This is a summation of the vocal minority I received in my comment section. It's something that needs to be pointed out and discussed how the Elder Scrolls lore is nothing more than another tribe, another religion, 
another political party. And people are lashing out, calling folks names. They're just being human and protecting their tribe. Let's start with Sultus here. This case is very important to talk about because he perceived me, who, whom was actually having fun, enjoying myself making a response video as being salty. When in reality, this was actually an enjoyable activity for me. Just as much fun as booting up Morrowind Oblivion or Skyrim and playing it. If it wasn't enjoyable, I wouldn't be doing it. But his immediate reaction is to project his anger or saltiness on me. The unbridled anger is pretty much apparent as he begins to respond to other commenters as if they were me. Remember in the Lordbeard's video I talked about how people create connections where none actually exist in reality? I gave an example of a character I wrote about and then I got feedback about. This is further proof of that concept regardless of how I actually feel, regardless of the excitement I put forth in my video, he can't help but see me as a miserable, salty individual. And that's because he's projecting his own emotions onto me. He is demonstrably salty if you actually follow the comment chain. And I don't think he can stand a world where I'm happy and he's not about the same situation. He claims they extended an invitation to start a dialogue with them. Well, aside from some YouTube comments, which, let's face it, they aren't exactly the highest caliber of discussion, um, I heard very little from him. Other members of the TES lore community did contact me in private messages and wanted to do a discussion. But when I made it clear I wanted to either stream it live or make a video out of it, those particular people backed out. Now, I've since received other folks coming to me and saying we want a discussion, but that's more recent. He's talking about things that happened in the past and so am I. But you see where those people did not want to make this public, and I did. Ultimately, you can see how my viewpoint could be incompatible with those of pure hobbyists. You see, the apparent connection that Sothis has to his group his hobby, his tribe. Convincing me was very important to him, and when that couldn't be accomplished, I became a de facto enemy, like a person from opposing political party or religion, someone who is going to mislead the pure upstanding folks into voting the wrong way or eternal damnation. And that's the problem with attaching your ego, your self-worth, and your identity to things you like. If anyone criticizes those things, it damages you. And this lashing out is an example of that. My lashing out, on the other hand, was an example of a tit for tat about the things directed at me, not the things I liked. I'm able to separate attacks against my person against attacks on, say, Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall, which I'm currently enjoying more than any other Elder Scrolls game opinion subject to change. But let's approach this a different way and show how it can actually affect people and make them do very stupid things. Now, this is an example from the Elder Scrolls Lore Facebook group. I don't frequent it myself. However, people do send me screenshots from it routinely. I tend to ignore them, but every once in a while, one kind of piques my interest. And it piqued my interest when it happened. However... I only found out about it a little bit afterward. Now I'm only using this person as an example because they wanted me to respond. They wanted a reaction out of me. And now that they've likely given up on that and moved on, I'm going to give them what they previously wanted but likely no longer want. You've got my attention now, Evans. You see, Evans has posted with the, the exact same username, by the way, on my YouTube comment section. Well, what he ended up doing is, while I was out with my wife, attending to social obligations, as I have a life outside of nitpicking things in YouTube videos, while I was out, apparently he changed the group status to private. And then, as I understand it, had someone post in my comment section saying that I'm a liar and the group is private. To which, of course, I simply had screenshots from earlier that 
blatantly showed it as public. But either way, I was out for like four hours, and during that time, I missed the whole thing. So it was apparently some kind of troll bait and bomb thing? I, I don't know. But either way, what would it have accomplished had I been here? Had I been here, and one of my followers told me that the group was going private, I would have discussed it with people on my Discord server, and that's about it. I wouldn't have made a video about it. I would have simply thought to myself, well, I guess they wisened up and figured out that maybe they shouldn't say things that they don't want to be shared in a public space, so they made it private, which is the natural conclusion to how you make sure that your information isn't being spread. You don't share it. Looking back on it, had this not been a troll and bomb technique, it would have actually been a reasonable thing for him to do. An understandable thing for him to do. And yet it was part of some kind of trolling agenda. And he felt that it was necessary to try and troll me in some way that wouldn't have even worked had I been here at the time. It's just, it's mind-boggling. But either way, he ended it with something that's very, very telling. Because everything I do is cancer to him. Take a moment and think about that. Let's, let's go back to his YouTube commenting history, shall we? Okay, so I know this is kind of tiny, but Evan Smith, the, the same one who was on the lore page, so Evan uses the exact same username here on YouTube, and in my comments section, he said, he commented on the last lore video, lightly put, he had some problems with it, and he went and explained, you know, his side of it. And my response was that, I don't hate Michael Kirkbride, but at the same time, I don't respect his writings as absolute canon, and, and I explained my point of view, and why I wouldn't include what he thought was important in it. Sothis went and responded to him, and tried to, again, explain to me why it's so important that I cover this particular part of the lore in the beginning where it's far too advanced. I've, I was already confusing the crap out of people with my general, very surface-level introduction to the metaphysics of the Elder Scrolls universe. So my reply to all of that was simple. There's a limit to how far you can go down the metaphysical rabbit hole before you lose the target audience, who are not TES lore regulars. Even when I mention it, it'll likely be subjective stuff that ha half of everyone will disagree with. Which is my stance to this day, is if you want to present lore, you have to do it in a way that your audience can understand, because I'm not discussing lore on the Selective's lore cast. I'm not talking about how some monkeys danced on a tower and broke time. I'm talking to people who've never read any of the in-game lore books. And because I'm addressing this simpler audience and I wanna make sure that my videos target that audience properly, his reply is, you talk down to me and I don't really appreciate it. In other words, I don't share his values, so I speak with authority in my sphere, which is making simpler videos than what he would want me to make. And because I did that, where I felt I was being respectful to him, but not to his tribe. And therefore, I was talking down to him, apparently. This is an example of him identifying with his tribe. Simply because everything he does is cancer to me. Everything Evan does is cancer to me, apparently, according to him. And yet, and yet, look over here. He sent me this some time ago. And I said that it was a very fitting bit of Nord roleplay there. It's totally valid from an in-world peasant perspective. Not an objective perspective, not even the perspective of a learned scholar, but if you're a Nord and you're a dumb peasant, someone who's just 
in the world going about their daily lives. That article makes perfect sense from that perspective and should be valued as a piece of literature written by that just peasant Nord. And yet, because he disagrees with my interpretation or thinks because I agree with that, that it that I should agree with everything else, I don't know. I don't understand his thought process when he flat out tells me that everything he does is cancer because I disagree with his tribe. And yet I've never had any reason to dislike him. As a person, I've never seen him as an enemy. But because apparently I made some comments, well, apparently I talked down to him and he doesn't appreciate it. I'm thinking you're an oversensitive baby. Baby, baby, wah, wah. In your echo chamber, which you sealed off, which, again, I actually agreed with your your decision to seal off your echo chamber, and when you opened it up again, well, I don't know. That was just my personal opinion. All of this was just my personal opinion. I could be wrong, and maybe Sothis didn't mean what he was saying. Maybe Sothis isn't so ingrained in his tribe that he actually sees my my criticisms of his favorite thing as an attack. But based on Sothis' reaction, I'm very inclined to believe that he should seek therapy and try to get a better understanding of why he feels the way he does. People said in that thread that I was being very defensive, but I saw it personally from my perspective. I was having fun you know, responding to each thing. Because remember, narcissist, you're talking about me. Let's let's respond to that. It's fun. They don't see it that way. They see it as I am butt hurt. I don't know. All I know is when you look up Lorebeard on a video search, apparently mine is the only one there. Now I'm not suggesting that we debate this because it's clear that our viewpoints are irreconcilable. I don't think that science fiction belongs in the Elder Scrolls universe. You can point out all you want that, well, science fiction has been there all the time because the battle spire's a spaceship. Magical construct. It's the same thing! You know, my point is, you can see why now this discussion that everyone wanted to have didn't happen. I believe firmly that canon exists, but that it's not important unless you make it important. I don't believe there are only levels of good ideas. I believe there are terrible ideas. And as a critic, I will judge ideas to be good or bad. Who gave me that authority? I gave it to myself. And you don't have to respect that opinion, which is great. But there are people who do. People who might be watching this video right now. But either way, I can't think of a single thing that if you criticized it, that I would see it as a personal attack. Other than, of course, the personal attacks that were levied against me. Because there's a difference between attacking an idea, a concept, and attacking a person. People called me a hypocrite. I'm a confirmed, self-acknowledged hypocrite. It's not a bug. It's a feature. But I made this video not to get back at anybody, but to try to open some people's eyes here about fandom and the dangers fandom has, about religion and politics and why people do and say what they do. I'm certain that people have hopped on to the Facebook group and they've harassed people, even though I told them not to harass people. Because at the end of the day, I control nobody. The right sort of people would never harass you guys. The wrong sort of people will ignore my requests to not harass you. Also, there is the troll factor. There are some people who exist for no other reason than to kick up some problems. Sothis, get some help. Or at the very least, get some objectivity. And Evan, I don't hate you. 
I don't think everything you do is cancer. However, I do denounce people who have this groupthink mentality. Oh, you criticize the thing I like, so I hate you now. I will denounce that until the end of time. However, I will gladly take my three internets and go home. This will probably be the last video you see on this topic. Unless, of course, someone responds in kind and then the cycle begins again. But I think I've made my point. It doesn't matter if it's Undertale or The Legend of Zelda or The Elder Scrolls or Dark Souls. Don't identify. Don't put your ego into the things you like. Because you lose all objectivity. And you'll do and say incredibly stupid things thinking someone else has to hate your guts when they're actually neutral to you. So take this video as a warning. Either way, thank y'all for watching. Check the links for more content and I will see y'all next time. This crab oh, oh must die. <laughs> oh.